What is up, ladies and gentlemen? But most of all, you ladies out there, thanks for clicking on another episode of Break the Silence. I am your host, Cyborg. We witness history tonight. Split cap! <laughs> We just witnessed history in San Antonio, Texas, in a game between the Golden State Warriors and the San Antonio Spurs, two teams that are revered organizations that have been some of the best organizations in the entire NBA in the last 20 years. You could argue the two best organizations over the last 20 years and an incredible performance from the fans in a stadium that was so electric. Tonight, there were 68,000 323 fans at the Alamo Dome, the old home of the San Antonio Spurs, their stadium from 1993 to 2002. Tonight, David Robinson, Spurs legend, was there. And it was unbelievable to watch. It was so cool to have all those fans in the stadium at once. They were going crazy. And then you had the Golden State Warriors coming into town, obviously the team that just won the NBA Finals. And better yet, the second game back from Stephen Curry. So, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to watch that team, it is it is an incredible experience. So unbelievable to watch. Yes, the game was not all that close, but we're going to spend some time tonight talking about the Golden State Warriors because it's been a little while since I talked about them because I think sometimes you can't correctly evaluate a team without Steph Curry <laughs> and with all the injuries the Warriors were going through. They really needed some time to get back on track. We were never all out on the Warriors. On this here podcast, I've believed in the Warriors the whole time. I think if you played them in a playoff series, I would be terrified. I would be terrified to play the Warriors in a playoff series. And I think that they're uh, one of the top contenders in a wide open Western Conference. But when Steph Curry's out, there's only so much you can really talk about. But tonight, we're going to break down a lot of parts of the Warriors. What we've seen over the last month or so where they've really started to turn it around. You're seeing more production from some of their bench guys they were hoping to see production from. And then obviously with Steph back, this team will get right back to its winning ways, I would imagine. Before we get into this game, first, please take a second to like and subscribe to the channel. You see we're at almost 800 subscribers, and I can't wait to get there. We're going to keep grinding. We're on the road to 1,000, so please take a second to hit that little button. Would be greatly appreciated. So, As many of you know, I am a Boston Celtics fan, and on this podcast, I analyze basketball the way I see it. I try to keep my biases out of it, and I think that that's the best way to do it. I think the the problem with a lot of modern media is that so many people are looking looking at the game through what they want to see, whether they hate LeBron James, whether they love LeBron James, whether they hate Giannis, whether... All those sorts of things. To me, I just evaluate basketball the way that I see it. And let me tell you, there was there's nothing more terrifying than the flashback of seeing this Warriors team play at this dominant level. Remembering the NBA Finals last year where the, uh, the Golden State Warriors just destroyed the Boston Celtics in those final couple games to win that series in six. Steph Curry was unbelievable. Uh... Andrew Wiggins was unbelievable. They got big contributions from Klay Thompson, Kevon Looney. Draymond Green was doing his thing. And they kind of retooled this year. Coming into the season, what you wanted to see was development from some of their young guys. And thus far in the season, um, it's been a little up and down. It's been a little up and down. We were hoping to see more from James Wiseman. He's been a little bit disappointing. We were hoping to see a little more from Kaminga and Moses Moody. Those were their three young guys that they were really, really high on. They were seen as really valuable assets to a Golden State Warriors team that was already good. Those three guys have had a little bit of a struggle to come into the season, which is why I think that that Steph Curry injury could almost be a good thing for the Golden State Warriors. Obviously, you never want anyone to get hurt. Right now, the Golden State Warriors, I believe, are the seventh seed in the Western Conference with this win tonight. Um, So that's not exactly where you want to be. But that time for those young guys to play a bigger role. Jordan Poole's really gotten going. Dante DiVincenzo played very, very well tonight. We'll get into that in a second. Um, Anthony Lamb. Seems like they actually got something in him. Uh, a, a guy that maybe we didn't expect. But you lost Gary Payton. And, you know, some of your other guys are starting to starting to age a little bit. The reality of it is that Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, they're starting to get 
you know, in the back half of their career. So you never know what, w- at what point age is going to affect those guys. So you really need the development of these young guys if the Warriors want to compete for another title. And I think that they fully have that capability. The thing you got to remember about the Warriors, even last year, was they weren't overly, overly impressive in the regular season. It was in the playoffs and in big moments, you knew that you could trust Steph Curry almost over almost any player in the entire NBA. And that's what came through for them when they hit the playoff time and they had an elite defense. And that's the thing that many people don't give the Warriors credit for. Yes, when they uh, when they went 73-9, and nine, their offense was awesome. When they added Kevin Durant, their offense was awesome. But their defense was always a top five defense in the NBA. And last year when they won a title, they were the number two defensive team in the entire NBA in the regular season. And they were number 16 offensively. So they were an average offensive team with an elite scorer in Steph Curry that can make plays down the stretch and an elite defensive team. And that's the recipe for winning a title in the NBA. Keeping games close and then your star performing when it matters most. And I think Steph Curry in the finals last year had his greatest uh, apex moment. I think we all agree on that. We finally got over the stupid uh, Steph Curry can't win a finals MVP. All those dumb conversations that people were having. We finally, Steph got that monkey off his back and came through when it mattered most. Especially in game was it game four? Game, game four where he almost single-handedly beat the Celtics scoring 40 points. Either game four or game five, if I'm remembering correctly. The things that I really liked from the Warriors tonight. Dante DiVincenzo is a guy that I was really high on when he played in Milwaukee. He obviously got hurt. I believe he got traded. He might have been with the Kings last year. But I thought it was a really nice pickup for the Golden State Warriors. A guy who can defend. A guy who can shoot the basketball. A guy who can drive with the basket. Kind of brings you good energy off the bench. Tonight he had 22 points. Was a plus 20, which was the highest of the game. Had five assists and seven rebounds. That's very good production. Now, some of the bench numbers are a little inflated. Tonight, playing the Spurs because they were up by so many points. But still, you saw a lot of flashes. Jordan Poole is is so creative with the basketball. I I think if you ask me how to describe his game, he's probably the most creative offensive player in the NBA as far as, well, maybe not the most creative. But that's just the thing that stands out to me is that he does stuff that you're just like, what did he just do? And then he kind of makes the shots. And it's really entertaining to watch. And... um, you know, it, it's got. A, he's got a little bit of. Uh, it looks like he's learned some stuff from Steph, but he's also got a pretty unique game to himself. So Jordan Poole was excellent tonight. Moses Moody had 12 points. Uh, you love to see the development there. The guy that I kind of like is this Anthony Lamb guy. He's a forward on the season. Let me look at what his average is. I might have hit Dante DiVincenzo, uh, but Anthony Lamb uh, played 24 minutes tonight on the season. Is averaging 7.2 points a game, which you know. He's not playing a whole lot of minutes to start the season, especially, but he's shooting 50% from the field and 39.1% from three. That is incredible to have a guy that you maybe didn't expect to play a big, big role on this team. He's in his second season in the NBA to be shooting 40% from three. And we were talking about having Clay and Steph and Jordan Poole on the court. If you had another sniper and Andrew Wiggins, obviously, you know, can, can shoot, can shoot pretty well. Um, If you had another guy like Anthony Lamb that can really shoot the basketball, that's so effective. The thing that I noticed early on, and especially in the first quarter, was the Kavon Looney pick and roll. And the Warriors run so many unique actions when you watch their game. And I wish YouTube allowed me to break down some of the film. But they do almost a lot of pick and rolls off ball as well uh, with some of their guys to where, you know, the ball handler's over here. And then these two guys over here will run like a pick and roll play. And then the guy, the guy handling the ball here will either hit the pass or hit the, um, guy who popped out. And it's, it's actually really interesting to watch, uh, how the Warriors do that. But the Kavon Looney is a very good screen setter and he's a very good role man to the basket. And tonight him and Clay Thompson felt like they had a good rapport early and Kavon Looney had 14 points and 10 rebounds. When you're talking about this Warriors team, the thing that's so great is that they're able to get contributions from so many spots. And you don't give enough credit to guys like Kevon Looney, Andrew Wiggins, uh, even, you know, old Andrew Bogut, JaVale McGee, guys like that who played such an important role for this Golden State Warriors team. Uh, They just don't get enough credit all the time. 
And that's obviously because you have someone as great as Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and Draymond Green and all the things that those guys bring to the table. But you do also want to highlight these role guys that are important in taking that step from a very good team to an all to an all time great team. And when you're talking about the Warriors and the Spurs, these are two of the best organizations in the last 20 years. There are teams that have won a lot of titles. In fact, they've given LeBron James a <laughs> the two biggest headaches in the league. You've had Tim Duncan, Steph Curry, um, two of the top 10 players of all time have played on both of these rosters and two teams that are at very different spots. This year, the Warriors are number one in assists, uh, number 18 in offensive rating, number 23 in defensive rating. The thing that concerns me a little bit, they're number 29 in turnover. So if you're trying to get back to that, uh, that finals form, that championship level form, we need you to take care of the basketball a little better and improve on the defensive end of the court, which is where their calling card has been. I do want to talk briefly about the San Antonio Spurs. They're 13 and 30. They're obviously not trying to win a lot of basketball games. When you trade DeJounte Murray, you're you're saying, you know, we're not, we're not trying to win really. Um, But they have seen massive development from Keldon Johnson, from Devin Vassell. um, And they maybe have another, tradable asset in Jakob Pertl, but you're going to go into the off season with potentially the number one, number two pick, and you can get a Victor Wimbanyama, Scoot Henderson, and build this team back around an elite level player. And I think that's what the Spurs want to do. If you can hold on, you'll hold on to Keldon Johnson. You got a really good wing there. And then you add Victor Wimbanyama, which I guess technically is a big man, but I don't even know what position you're going to consider him because he can, he's so versatile, but the San Antonio Spurs team right now is number 27 in offensive rating, number 30 in defensive rating. So they just don't defend at a high level. Uh, they don't really play offense at a high level. But I do like some of the flashes I'm seeing from some of their young guys. And I think as the season progresses, you just want to see development from Keldon Johnson. Can he keep that up for a full season? Devin Vassell um, and some of their other young guys. As they continue to develop this roster, Greg Popovich is obviously an all-time great coach. Will he want to continue coaching? If he gets a guy like Victor Wimbanyama, potentially he will. Um, but otherwise, if if he thinks they're going to be bad for the next couple of years, he he may, you know, kind of move on. But we'll see you there, uh, Spurs fans. I'd be excited about your future. You got a ton of assets. You could potentially get the number one pick in this year's draft and. If you, if you get Victor, you're right where you want to be. You're right where you want to be, and you have a rebuild. You had a couple down years. So, Spurs, I like what you're seeing. I like what I'm seeing. That's all we got for you as far as this game. We're going to go watch this Nuggets game, Nuggets Clippers. I know Jokic is out, but we're going to react to that game as well. We're going to do a two-reaction night. Don't, ta- uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to keep grinding these videos. Appreciate you all watching. Appreciate all the support. So many kind words. Cyborg out.